All three Beards Media podcasts originate from the Gravitate Coworking Studio, sponsored by Revelton Distilling Company. Hey, what is up, everybody? We are live from the Gravitate Co-working Studios and also live from Billy Blank's Monster Party Bar, Iowa Hawkeye Central Bar that he's got going on. This is a new episode of Fall Starts where we talk mental health and I sometimes make fun of Bill. Bill, what's up? Uh, not too much, man. It's been... Um... Been a weird, uh, been a, a bit of a weird week. That's why our guest is on in a way is to kind of, I, uh, my, uh, moved my grandfather to hospice today, uh, or I'm sorry, yesterday. Um, so as a family, we're kind of dealing with that whole, you know, end of life situation. So um, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's weird, you know, and we'll talk about this a little more, but when it comes to like mental health and everything, like, um, I always have this, you know, when things like this happen, sometimes I feel like I should, like, I don't feel bad enough. Like I'm right. not bad enough or something. Like I have my moments, you know? Yeah. But it's like, you, you just hear about people, you know, people are usually talking about their grief in it. I think that's what kind of what we're going to talk about today mostly is kind of how everybody kind of grieves differently and how everything's kind of okay. Yeah, I uh I can remember when my when my dad passed away, it was like 3 weeks before my marriage to Stacy and I just remember instantly when he passed away when I was in the room, I was like, okay, I have to man up here and take care of things. I can't I can't I can't let it get to me. And I went an entire week just solely focused on taking care of mom, getting the funeral arrangements. I did his eulogy. I did the whole, I, I planned the whole service. And mm -hmm. then I remember as soon as everybody had walked out, two of my best friends stayed in the room with me. And then that's when I finally like broke. But like, it was just a matter of, all right, I no, I gotta, I gotta honor dad by taking care of things. And then I'll, I'll deal with my grief later. So. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I've, I've had my moments over the last few days, you know, obviously I've shed my tears and everything, but um, there's that thing where it's like, like my uncle said at one point the other day, like, you don't, don't feel like you have to be here all the time. Like, right. you know, he's probably going to hang on for a few more days. Like, you know, basically kind of giving me the, you know, telling us all like, you it's okay if you say yeah. goodbye now and don't come back until whenever right. it's okay or whatever, you know what I mean? Well, and it's hard to, it's hard to articulate to some people, but like I know with my dad, he would not have wanted me to sit in that room all that time. You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you got your wife and your family and things like that to take care of. I, you know, I, I'm, I don't want you to be wasting your time here is basically what he would have told me. But, yeah. Cause there's like nothing you can do. Or right. Whatever. Yeah. You want, I guess, I think people tend to project their, their, themselves in these situations. They kind of do what they hope is happening when they're in that situation. Right. You know, they yep. want to make sure they're surrounded by loved ones and, you know, and it right. probably makes them to feel better. Maybe feeling like he's comforted. You don't know what's going on in his head, you know, like right. he's out of it. So, yeah. Um, hundred percent. Um, well, Anyway, yeah, uh, we we'll bring our guest on here. Uh, I'm about to. Uh, this is a this is a man who's one of my closest friends. We've uh, we've been friends for over 20 years now, which is a, a weird thing to think about uh, because I looked up to him so much. But this is uh, my friend, my one of my mentors, uh, and just an all out wonderful human being who I love dearly. Everybody, please welcome Willie Farrell. 
to thank you billy i love the, you too you know the that. Show. oh yeah so um willie's in the bar with me i got i set up two different computers it's, we're actually sitting across from each other but uh aesthetically i thought it would look better like this and i think it does i think it does a, yeah it's good well uh, willie willie makes any situation look better well, especially on shows like I, we just did, uh, we did the Remington Award <laughs> together, and all of a sudden I had to wear a suit. That was, you know, it was old, really. But I still I haven't seen a photo of this suit. I still you I, have I, it. No, uh, I haven't seen. Looks <laughs> badass. Very yeah, really, was, I, I told him I was all upset he wasn't going to wear that red velvet thing that he saw when we when we went and watched you guys. The Joey uh, Joey Claus. Joey Claus. Claus. Yeah. yeah, it's my favorite outfit he's got. I'm on TikTok now. There's, I'm, I, I'm going to do the Joey Claus on TikTok. Oh, well. Yeah. I, well, this is, this is a nice setup here. Thank you. Yeah. Billy and I got the Lou Gothic Jr. down there on the. Uh... <laughs> <I love it. laughs> so, Willie, this is the first seen my dog before. You've met my dog. But, yep. yeah. So, Will, Willie's. Uh, my dog looks like Samuel L. Jackson, I say all the time. <laughs> and Willie's like he does. Lou Gossett Jr. And then later on tonight he said, "Called him Lou Gossett Jr." Uh, <laughs> oh, Iron Eagle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's uh, Iron Eagle. Uh, Here's what's what crazy. Was Speaking of Luke... the alien or whatever with the fucking uh, one of the Quades. Uh, what? what was that? Yeah, Lou, Lou Gossett, Gossett Jr. Jr. Yeah, you got yeah, to. What was that? Dude? I have no idea. Nobody. I the only ones I know are <laughs> the only one I knew of was was Officer and a Gentleman where he was an yeah. absolute dick. Yeah. So you didn't watch Iron Eagle? I watched. Yeah, I mean that was the other one, Iron Eagle, of course. Oh. But but no. Yeah. So Officer. all right, I'll, I'll look it known, up. You wouldn't have known it was him. It was Dennis Quaid, uh -huh. and Dennis Quaid was like a fighter pilot or something. And I think he he shot they shot each other down or something. Him and this enemy, enemy mine. Yeah, and enemy Lou, mind. Lou's also been uh, in various movies. I think he's also been in the ring of some boxer. He's always like, yeah, uh, he's a boxer in yeah. something. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. uh oh, that's got uh, James Wood in it. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, Digstown. Yeah, where yeah. he like they like make the bet yeah. that he can yeah. he can knock yeah. out ten people in twenty four yeah. hours. Yeah. That's well, a great like, movie. I love that movie. A, he's laying on a sofa right now. Right on the couch. <laughs> yeah, that's a damn shame. James Wood went. And, yeah. He he went kind of nuts, but that's a whole nother that's a whole nother right? podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. Well, I'm glad the tin foil hat uh, podcast. Yeah, this is, you know, it's so funny. Um, uh, I'm I'm 67, so I've been through the the ropes, and uh, it, it's I, I grew up. Uh, my, my life was kind of strange growing up as a kid, and, and as I got older, it hasn't gotten any strange any less stranger. But uh, it, it's funny because uh, you know Bill tells me about therapy and things like that, and I was wondering if I ever went. I, I just that's a Pandora box. I don't think I'd ever want to open. There's just too many things out there about myself that I, I think I just soon keep covered. But yeah, you know, I like it. I, I, I work on my mental health all, all the time. I mean, that's it's very important. I've seen too many people lose it, lose their fucking mind. So, so do you think therapy will like? Just like it's too late or something. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I think I've actually got a control over it. I, I think I, I don't think it's too late, and I think it'd probably be good for me. But I also feel like I've worked on myself enough that I think I've gotten the control over. I mean, I, I kind of understand why I am the way I am. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I, you know, and I, I talk to my wife. We got a great relationship. We, we, you know, I, I open up to her. I talk to her because I you definitely need. They don't for people that try to keep everything inside themselves. Sure. It's so wrong. You gotta. You got to talk to somebody. I mean, I don't even care if it's uh, you get Lou Gossett Jr. Talk to <laughs> get it out and you know, get it out so you can you know you can hear it. I said out loud, whatever it is, it's bugging you. But uh, yeah. you know, well, like, go ahead. That's all right. So it, it's funny because about this time last year is when Bill and I started this podcast, and yeah. I went through a weekend retreat, which was basically it, it, it was a spiritual retreat, but a lot of it was ten guys telling their life stories uh -huh. and being completely and open and vulnerable. Yeah. And that's just unheard of for, yeah. for men to do. And and exactly. we had another one this last week and I, or this last weekend. And I remember telling the guys at the end, they, they asked us what, you know, if you could name one word that you would describe this weekend. And I, and I just used the word proud. I was like, yeah. it takes a lot of courage oh, to open probably. yourselves up in yeah. a situation like this. Yeah. And be completely vulnerable in front of you know 10, 12, 15 other 
guys, you know them, but you don't know their stories. You know, you don't know what their lives are, are like. And it, you should be really proud that you can do that. It's because you've been told your whole life not to do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's how I grow. You know, and it's funny when you talk about what Billy's going through and you're, you're like, there's a thing that comics have a thing that's called stage health. Bill, you ever heard of this where mm -hmm. uh, you can be sick as a dog and for some reason you can muster up the health enough to get through a 45 minute set and get off the set and just be sick as a dog. It's called stage health. And I think the same thing with like a stage mental health. I mean, um, I, uh, I went on, I went on stage the day after my mother died and I was very, very close with my mother and I used to do a joke about her and I did the joke and I got through it. I don't know how, and, uh, and I went on stage the uh, day after my best friend, my brother, died. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing that I got through it, but I, but I did. But, uh, you know, it's there's nothing quite like that to, to try to get through things like that. It's just, you know. Well, I think, too, you know, stage health or, or you know, athletics, too. You yeah. know, guys, you got the Jordan flu game and sure. you got guys are always playing with I a mean, heavy heart I mean, because right, something you know. happened, you know. Brett Favre um, played the day that his father. Yeah. Died. Well, yeah. I had to go on stage the night, the day I found out Paul. I was on my way to yeah. the show when we found out about Paul. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Paul was the owner of the Funny Bone, um, and I had to go on stage that night. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I got through that, and I had a great show. Uh, but um, yeah, I, it's there's also the element of that's what we do. Like a lot of people go to work when the day after their dad dies. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, th I think that you that, have to, you know, I think that there's a lot of what I had said earlier about when my dad died and, and six, you know, seven years ago when I went through chemo and radiation, it was almost like, I was like, I'll, I'll be damned if I'm going to let it dictate to me what I can and can't do. So I'm going to go to work every day. And I, I'm not going to let it win. And it's kind of the same mentality, I think, when when you deal with grief. I, For me, it would be more of I would listen to my dad go, hey, quit fucking feeling sorry for yourself. Uh -huh. You got a job to do. You got shit to do. You know, I'm not that important. That's what my no, dad would say. I, I don't think it's a matter of dealing with grief. As I found as I've gotten older, it's living with grief. I mean, because it never goes away. I mean, uh, right. with, my, with my brother, Johnny, um, you know, he died eight years ago. And... Uh, I, I cried hard afterwards, uh, and and to this day, I'll be fine. I'll be doing something. I used to call him when I used to go on the road. I used to call him uh, whenever I had to drive more than an hour or two because he could talk your off. He could talk for two hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, to this day, I, I, if I get on the road and I start driving, I know I can't call him, so I'll put on a, you know, we used to like the Temptations. I'll put that. And I, I'll find myself crying. In the, it's eight years now. It's eight years, and I think, I, you know, I've got through everything, but. It just, you know, it, it'll still bring up things that will make me, you know. And, and to be honest with you, I, it makes me feel good sometimes. And like what Billy was talking about, uh, sometimes you feel bad when you don't feel like you hurt enough. You yeah. Know? So so sometimes when I do that, I feel that I'm like, okay, you know, I, I still got something left in me, you know. But, yeah. Well, like for me, it was, you know, everybody's in the room talking to my grandpa and and I had no words and I, that's weird that I don't have words. Yeah. And so I just, I don't know. I, I feel, um, <clears throat> I also, kn I mean, I was emotional. I, I, I also knew that if I said anything, it wouldn't be coherent. Yeah. So what sure. was the point then either, but, um, it, it, there's like this little bit of guilt about not having any words. Now, I mean, he's, you know, I, I can obviously go see him right now. You know, what's you know, funny and, is when you go through that, but, as you get older, like myself, I mean, you're always going to feel guilty about anybody. I, I, I had a friend recently that died. He was a kid. He was younger than me, but he used to, he grew up around the same in my brother's bars and everything. And he was a good kid. And I lost track of him for 10, 15 years. Come to find out he got into heavy drugs and that's part of the reason he died. He got cancer from smoking meth. Or, I, I don't know. But I went and saw him uh, two days before he died. And I, I went to the room and I talked to him. And I, he was so happy to see me. And we sat and we talked. But I, when I left, I didn't feel better. I felt worse because I thought, why didn't I fucking keep in touch with this kid? Yeah. Why didn't I, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and now he was so happy to see me. And, and his sister was like, you know, he just made his day. And then I actually did the eulogy for him. She asked me to do his eulogy, which I did. but. I almost felt like 
I didn't deserve to do that. It was like, you know what? I, I should have been a better friend instead of, you know, doing, seeing him the day before he died, doing his eulogy. Maybe five years ago, if I would have found him wherever he was and sat with him then and talked to him, maybe he'd still be alive, you know? You, you, know, you, you, could, you could put these scenarios through your head in many different ways and make yourself feel bad about them. You, you can't do that. You, you can't beat yourself up. Life's too it's, fucking tough to beat yourself up. It's a little bit of survivor's guilt. Yeah. I mean, I have yeah, that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, exactly. I, 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 I got through chemo and got through radiation. And, and I mean, esophageal cancer is, you know, 20% mm -hmm. are, wow. are only survive. And I didn't, I, you know, I didn't know that story. You, that. And it's years amazing. later, years later, after I was completely clear, my doctor yeah. told me I had, he, when I left, he said, I, I would have gave you a 5% chance of living. Wow. But then shortly after I had surgery and whatever, I had a very dear friend of mine who, who got cancer and within six months she was gone. No. And you think, and you think to yourself, why did I, what, why? Like, I don't, now, that's hard to understand. Movies, you know, where they always show, like, there's always a, you know, you always have a group of people that, 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 that do the chemo together and stuff. Did you have a group like that you, that you went through that you sat with or? Yeah, I sat next to the same guy. The the big thing that the big effect it had on me was as I remember going in there and there was about a nine or a ten year old kid who was oh, already gosh. getting chemo when I got there. And when I left, he was still getting chemo. And the kid would wear a mask all the time because he couldn't get sick or whatever. And I just remember thinking to myself, I, I am absolutely not gonna feel sorry for myself when oh. you see this kid who's a thousand times stronger than me, which in turn you know, when the pandemic hit and people were whining and crying because they had to wear a mask, I always mm -hmm. remembered that 10 year old kid going, have, have you know, kept up on whatever happened to him. I, I haven't. No, I haven't. Yeah. I never, I never, I never talked to him or whatever, but I, I did, it did dawn on me at one point when I walked in there and these, these chemo nurses are just, they, they, you know, they, they light up when you come in and they, they yeah. take care of you and whatever else. And it dawned on me at one point, I was like, you know, they, they, have this unique ability to make you feel like you're the most important person, but they may have been working with somebody else that passed away that they never get to see anymore. And they're, you know, they, they grew attachment to those people too. And yet I walk in the door and I would have no idea yeah. like how, how kind of a person that could be to be able to do that. You I know, was more connected with that type of story yeah. than I was with, with the other people, but I also, when, when I finished, I did not ring the bell mm -hmm. and I why, didn't ring it. Yeah. I, I, I regret it now, yeah. but I didn't ring it because I didn't want to look like I didn't want to do that in front of somebody that wasn't that going, still to, going to ring to the bell. And, you know, and, and I wasn't entirely sure they were going to be able to ring the bell. And I didn't want to celebrate myself at the sacrifices. Of well, life. if that, the thing is at this point, if, if that 10 year old kid made it or didn't make it, it's probably because you didn't ring the bell and you didn't keep up with them. So if you just <laughs> want to go ahead and take that. You know, I'm thinking the it. same thing and I still want to say it out loud. Yeah. Thanks. Honest. See, that's um, because yeah, that's because Willie's Willie's from the South side. He's a lot more compassionate than yeah, you know, fucking North siders. Definitely. Probably something, uh, something you did or didn't yeah, do something right, you didn't, right. something you didn't do for that. Oh, uh, listen, <laughs> Willie, I don't, I don't go into St. Anthony's. <laughs> that, I'm Catholic. That scared, that church scared the shit out of me when I was a it kid. Should. It should. It's I, right. I, it scared the hell out of me. In there were Tuesdays. They got to get one exorcism, get another for free. So, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's funny, me and Billy, quite a few years ago, we did the show Cops for Cancer. There was a friend of ours uh, uh, that uh, put it on, uh, Craig Finney, and mm -hmm. uh, and he finally passed. And uh, he, uh, he, uh, he had, there was a big thing that they did at the downtown uh, uh, cancer awareness thing, and I, I went to that, and uh, he was there last year, and he wasn't there this year. But uh, uh, one of his nurses was is a cousin of mine named Jenny Cadaldo. And that's her job. She works with, you know, the terminally ill cancer patients every yeah. fucking day. And uh, I don't I don't know what's the, the closest thing to an angel you can get. Right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you can do that every day. Right. Denny's right. I'll tell you what with with Craig. He uh if he was if he was there, if he wasn't there last year, yeah. I bet it was a lot shorter. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that guy he jesus loved he loved to talk yes, and it's yeah. one of those deals you know oh. he's he's the guy who survived cancer and yeah. he's doing all this wonderful work 
that he's basically made his life work ever since. Yeah. Raising tons of money, just doing all this stuff. And so you can't, you can't ever just go, hey man. Like, well, me and Billy would go. <laughs> right. we'd, we'd, we'd have to raise. We'd have to go on radio and TV to do you know, to, to, to do commercials for these. And all the three of us would go on. And Greg, so I want to say a few words first. And by the time he got done, they would just say, "Hey, we got Bill Blank and Willie Farrell. So come to the yeah. Come to the time. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> say nothing. We, we the, the there was the thing we did the, at the Prohibition yeah. theme. Yeah. And so we're in there, and all these cops are dressed like mobsters from the twenties, and that was so that was weird. Uh, and then, uh, he, he went up, me and Willie both had to do sets. And then there was this other guy who's a cop who did stand up, who, uh, got like videotaped racial profiling or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he was in the, he was in the, uh, we were in the, we were in the green room before the show. And me and Willie were fucking half crotch cause it was already like an hour in. And this kid comes back there, and I go, "Hey, I watched that video you following that black guy." Oh <laughs> and he just, I don't, I profile behavior. I don't profile. <laughs> oh, I was fucking me and Willie were just looking at each other, because it's and he is a he's a he's a nice dude or whatever, but he's like everything you would think of. I mean, he's literally what fucking five four. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> Like talk about that kid that got beat up in high school. Yeah. Like, that or a referee, I go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that guy fucking really listen, listen, guys. Hey, he's he's the guy that he's just all you ever hear out of him is just like, like, hey, hey, you can't do that. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. ma'am, ma'am, you can't sit there, yeah, ma'am. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> there's just no conversation. He's that, just so he's like that remember. cop at the north end zone, is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> so i go up on i remember i went up on stage i was fucking trashed by the yeah. time i got up there because like Greg, Templeton Ryan. I, yeah he, willie had fucking half a bottle of doors yeah. gone i had half a bottle of rum gone oh, yeah. because he was and, and heather was there heather yeah. burnside yeah. was there with paul and paul was supposed to go up and do something he had his like blues on or whatever yeah and ended up I remember Heather coming back to the green room twice going, is he going <laughs> to, yeah. like he had to have been up there for 45 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, it's all. And he so, got everything that he needed to say before he died. Right? Yeah, yeah, he definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just the nicest, oh, the most man. genuine, oh my God. Always, I, he was always, I, I, he would call me some days and, and I would be like, I had a bad day. So I, the gig fell out and, 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 and I'd be like, well, what are you doing? Well, it came from chemo. <laughs> And, and he was happier than me. So yeah. I go, uh, because I couldn't get my dry cleaning that day. I was all pissed off. And he, <laughs> I remember I went up, I went up and I said, how many, because like everybody was cops almost. Yeah. And how many of you guys are cops? Susan, it's like 90%. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, I got to call some of my friends. This is the safest black people been in this city. In the <laughs> <laughs> and they all just. Oh, I was like, oh, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I was fucking crying. A month before he died, he called me. He lived down south of Des Moines. And he called me at Wilmer's house. He's in bed. His uh, mother-in-law let me in. And we're talking. And he's just talking. He would be talking about certain things. All of a sudden, in the middle, he'd stop and say, so anyway, for my eulogy, I would like you to blah, blah, blah. And he would say, and I said, hey, crack this down. So then he'd be talking. So oh, there's a raccoon that's back there. And he eats all the food. We took some pictures. And. And we talk about the raccoon, and all of a sudden he say, so anyway, at the end of my eulogy, what I'd like you to do is drape the, the, the uh, flag over my cough. I mean, he was just going back and forth in these conversations, <laughs> and half of them were about him being fucking dead. I mean, it's just, but he handled it so well. It was just, it was amazing. You know, that, that's, the, you know that, that's the one thing, is you always want to be that guy that they say, you know, he faced death like a man. Yeah. yeah. See, that's, I, and that's the thing. Yeah. Like, See, Willie and I were just at a funeral together not yeah. too long ago. And uh, I remember <laughs> Willie leans over to me. <laughs> it's, the fear is not even over yet. And Willie's like, really? And that's me up there. I want you to just fucking throw yourself on the floor. Just make it seen. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because everybody was being very nice. You don't love me enough. No. <laughs> I want you. 
Pretend I'm Paul, Bill. What are you doing? Oh, just God. Like, yeah. I, yeah, just want I, I want I want a scene to be made. You fucked me on that one because. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so Paul, we had basically a big um, party. Yeah. I mean, after the funeral, yeah, it, you know, it was a reception, whatever. But it was we kind of put it together like <laughs> a celebration. A show. Yeah, and and we all life, I believe, so a bunch of us went up. You know, and and talked about Paul, uh, uh, mostly comics, but there was a one of his friends, and then there was another guy um, who I think went to school with him or something that talked about him, um, and then the rest were just all comics. And Willie basically hosted the whole thing, and so he's talking blah blah blah, and. Everybody goes up, tells all these stories. Everybody's, it's you know, it's like a comedy show. It's just everybody's yeah, laughing. Funny, and, cute yeah, things. all these cute little stories. And, uh, you know, I was obviously very emotional throughout the whole thing. And Blubbering McBlank comes up. <laughs> <laughs> so really- oh, hold on. Hold on. I got to change the opening to the show. <laughs> So I go up there, and uh, it's like, so Willie goes, okay, well, this next guy, he goes, uh, well, you know, he goes, he'll, he goes, Paul, he'll, he'll tell you how he felt about him. Paul, Paul was his Buddha, you know, and so I go up, and Willie hugs me and kisses me on the cheek, and he's like, just take a deep breath, you'll be fine. And I'm like, you didn't need to say that. <laughs> so he says that, and now all of a sudden I get up to the mic and I can't even get a fucking it's, word out. It's 9 11. Thomas just got hit. It's blown the So then, so then I get done and. I mean, it went great. I mean, I'm crying through the whole thing, but I'm, people are, I'm telling some funny stories or whatever, but, you know, it was, nobody else cried up there at all. I was a fucking mess. Oh, God. And and so uh, I get done and Willie goes back up and he's doing whatever. And I, I remember I yelled from the back of the room and I was like, I go, I go, now you finally have to follow me, you know, yeah. or like how you, you know, and he goes, <laughs> He goes, yeah, you really brought the room up. <laughs> <laughs> we were all licking about all his good memories and yeah. really, just really like I'm so in the hole of the grave. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, blubbery <laughs> McBlank. I'm so using that in the promos. It's so, so great. You so know what, that's though? That's one thing I love about Billy more than anything is that uh, yeah, uh, there's no... Yeah, however he feels, you're gonna you're gonna see it, you know. And that's why I, that's why he's probably still alive to this day, being a you know, psych kid he is. But uh, <laughs> I, 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 he does it exactly like you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to you're supposed to fucking let people know exactly how you feel. That's the right thing to do. That's right. And and I, it, to be honest with you, sometimes in those situations, a little bit of laughter and whatever is is yeah. the best thing going. I there are times where Caitlin, my daughter, and I will we'll be in situations and I'll lean over and I'll just make a crack mm-hmm. and she'll start laughing and I'll be like, we're really bad people. And she's like, Hey, that's how we deal with things. Like that's just, yeah. you're just going to have to get used to it. Chris, what you I'm know? dealing with now is I've got a friend that's got ALS and he's probably one of my dearest friends in my whole life. He's a little bit older than me. I grew up with him and uh, he's going through it right now. And it's, it's not good. And uh, I, I take him once a week to Prairie Meadows and we just gamble. And uh, it's funny because he likes to play slot machines and he, it's to the point where his arms don't work anymore, so I got to put the money in the machine. But uh, that's what we do. We gamble and uh, we talk about everything under the sun. And if it, if his health comes up, we'll talk about that. You know, right. today we even discussed uh, you know how long he'll, he thinks he'll be around. But uh, you know, I, it's the best thing in the world for both of us. I think you know what I mean. I, I, I'm, I'm getting to where you know I I, I won't have any regrets, and I think he's happy that he can talk about it and laugh about it and do whatever he needs to. Well, and he's outlived his older brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was worried about his older brother who was not in good shape. His older brother died last year, and yeah, uh, but he's he's a good guy. But uh, you know, you you talk about something in sobering. I mean, you know, what are my problems? I mean, he 
he he can't he can't literally feed himself at this point, and, and he's right. still you know, AL else is the worst because you know you're trapped inside inside their and their mind still works. So oh, if yeah. gives, so if that gives them yeah a little bit of a, a sense of normalcy, and yeah. for me to take my mind off of it for for X number of whatever, I well that's, he he's he's got what you got. He I mean he 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 handles it like a champ. I mean. You know, everybody wonders what they'll be like if they were ever put in that situation. You always want to think you'll you'd be the hero, but you know, not times out of ten, you're not. But you know, like I said, you went through what you went through, and you did it, and you, you got to, came through the other side. And I I don't know what's in store for him, but uh, as of right now, he's my hero. I mean, the way he's just handling all of this, it's amazing. Did you, Chris, ever feel like? Did you ever get to where it was just kind of a matter of fact thing, where you just kind of like? Like when I was in the hospital, obviously I wasn't, you know, this wasn't a terminal illness by any means, but, you know, pancreatitis is pretty serious yeah, yeah, and it was, right. it was, you know, but um, everyone else was way more worried about me than I was. Mm -hmm. Like it was just, it was weird because I had avoided the doctor and everything for so long because of being afraid of finding things out. And then once I was there, it was like everything was just very matter of fact to me. Like, okay, I, this is what I'm dealing with, and whatever. Like, I, there were two times that I that I I think came to an epiphany where I was like, it was almost like I was, yeah, this ain't this ain't happening the way people think is going to happen. The the first time was right after I got diagnosed, mm -hmm. and maybe it was a little bit of of just denial. I don't know. And, but, and let me ask you, sure. Like, uh, what exactly, uh, how, what came about to where you thought that this is nothing, something's wrong with me? So what, it actually came about very suddenly. I, it, f funny story, it was the day of my work. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, uh, <laughs> I get ready. The day, I mean, you I want to fucking, you want to talk about the most hilarious way to find out you got cancer. This one right here. <laughs> this is so great. All right, so it's not as funny as you guys would make it, all right? I'm the third funniest guy on this whole fucking podcast. Um, the day of the of, of my work was the it was a huge day of takeovers that we had never done before. I had a huge amount of work. And I jokingly said to my boss three days before, just so you know, I'm fucking calling in sick that day. So three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, I got up. I went to go use the restroom and I fell over and passed out. And... I, my wife came in and picked me up and walked me back to the bed. And I said, I don't, I don't know what happened. She goes, well, you fell twice. She goes, I'm going to call the ambulance. And I was like, no, it's fine. I feel fine. Like it's, I'm, I'm all right. <clears throat> and she was arguing with me and I was like, listen, we'll have sex right now. I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. Trust me. That's a guy. Did you oh, say that? I did say guys. that. <laughs> and guess what? That's the guy's response. Did guess you? what? You no, did? we did not. No, we did oh. not. So, so then I went back into the restroom and I, it was almost like I felt like there was like open chemicals or something. I was starting to get dizzy again. And I told her I got dizzy. So she called the ambulance. They checked my vitals and I was losing blood somewhere. I was losing pressure somewhere. So they took me to the hospital. And while I was waiting in the ER, I told them again, I had to go use the restroom. And when I finished in the restroom, there was blood in my stool. So they took me in for a scope and they found a tumor that was bleeding in the inside of my esophagus. Now, they tell me that's unheard of to find it like that. That usually you don't know you have esophageal cancer until you have extremely, extremely bad like, like heart heartburn yeah. and, and acid reflux and you can't swallow very well. So because at that point, the lucky break. so at that point, the tumor is so big yeah. that it's it's too far gone. Right. Yeah. Mine had started to bleed. And if mine wouldn't have bled, they would have never found it in time. Wow. So I was actually right on the cusp of stage three. Yeah. When they now the crux of it was I had had gastric bypass 10 years before that. Oh, okay. And the surgery for esophageal cancer is, is they remove your esophagus, they pull your stomach up and replace it with that. But they weren't entirely sure that they could do that with me. Because they because weren't you sure had already I, had the gas. Because I, they weren't sure if whatever portion of the stomach that was stapled off was viable anymore. So after six weeks of chemo and radiation, I had to go to the University of Iowa Hospital. And uh, Billy, you'll appreciate this. I had to do colon prep a week before 
the surgery so they could see if my colon was able to be used. But they wouldn't be able to be able to tell until they operated on me. So the day before my operation, which was my birthday, hmm. I had to do colon prep again a week later. So I did colon prep twice in, wow. in one day. In a week. Once on my birthday in a shitty hotel in Iowa City. So that's pun that's, intended. <laughs> right. So um, but they didn't have to. They were able to use my stomach and good. So obviously. luckily it's it's yeah. it's it's been well, but um yeah, that when I when I got diagnosed. I looked at my wife and I said, there's no fucking way that God brought you and I together to take it away 10 years later. So that's, that's just not possible. The other time was, it was a, it was a Monday night after I, I had chemo every Monday and I would always sit up later at night and just kind of be by myself to, to deal with my whatever. And Caitlin, my daughter walked up, she was a senior in high school and she was just bawling. And I said, what are, you, what are you crying about? And she goes, "It's I, I don't know why it happened to you. It's not fair that it happened to you. And I had just just watched this YouTube video called uh, Why Do We Fail? And it was like this inspirational video of these cuts of all these movie scenes or these famous speeches and whatever. Now, you're going to make fun of me. But the opening of this video was the portion of Rocky where he's telling his kid, you can you got one of two choices in life. You can lay on the ground and let the life kick the shit out of you. It's not how hard you punch. Right. Or you can get up. Yeah. yeah, right. And and I, 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 <laughs> and I just watched that and I told her, I said, We're not fucking crying anymore. We're not feeling sorry for our, ourselves anymore. People got a hell of a lot worse than we do. And I said, We can either lay here and let life kick the shit out of us, or we can get up and keep moving forward, and I'll be damned if I'm gonna let it kick shit out of me. And there you are today talking. And that was that's what I did. So you went from almost dying to where you're talking to two guys sitting in a dungeon someplace. There's that's no joke that after my last scan, Dr. Broker pulled me aside and he said, When you left that first day, I get I looked at my nurse and said I'd give him a five percent chance of surviving. That's amazing. That's yeah. Well, they are there you go. Yeah, and I mean, um and there's the I you talked about the colonoscopy. Like, I obviously got my first one. I'm 45. Mm -hmm. So that was this past Friday was my first one. It sucks. Uh, it's terrible. I've had like it's, 10. I mean, yeah. I think everybody's right when they say the prep is the worst part. It, but yeah, it is. It was, but it was not near as bad. Like, I didn't, from what I, everybody had already told me, I didn't expect the, the, the scope itself to be, yeah. I, I knew I wasn't going to know it, what was right. going on or anything. So like that part, I wasn't worried about. I actually wasn't worried about polyps. Like I expected to have polyps for some reason. I don't sure. know why I just expected to have a couple or whatever. And I did, I had three. Now but you have to go back they were, five years or three years. Well, the bio, I got to wait for the biopsies, okay, right. but they were all under five millimeters, yeah. which is, smaller than small right. so right. like uh my assumption is they're nothing but who who knows mm -hmm. but um i think it just really comes down to because they're so small like if they're pre-cancerous yeah. then they can we'll have to go back and we'll have to go back in like three to five years right. instead of ten yeah that's what, yeah. That's what um, happened to me i i had to do five five and then i they found some polyps and i went three three a couple times and I've had another one, so I'm, I'm due for probably my seventh or eighth one. But yeah, I don't mind at all. Which is not being able to eat that whole yeah. day is kind of really I mean, the. I mean, that's the only they, time then they give you the yeah. date rape drug and you don't remember yeah. anything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they feel Cosby. Yeah. It was funny because they say you talk. My wife said they came out and told her he talked during the whole thing and made us all uncomfortable. So <laughs> I, was like, I don't know what I said, but. Uh, yeah. All I know is, is I told my wife when I did that colon prep on my birthday, I was like, I'll be damned from now on my birthday. I'm eating whatever the fuck I want. And there ain't no fucking questions. About but, you know, the great thing is once you do it and you're cleaned out, you actually feel great because, I mean, you know, there's yeah. nothing bad. In, and that puts me afterwards like, you know, you're like a car on empty. Fill her up. You know, so. yeah. I'm going to go get a cheeseburger. I'm going to 100 percent. Let's take a break. I Let's take a break and then we can come back. We'll get the break out of the way and then we got the rest of the uh, 
rest the rest of the, of the podcast to talk about colonoscopies. Sure. Yes. No, we we can we can move off your ass. That's all right. Well, I was I was the only thing I was going to say was I'm sorry before the break, but that's all right. Then we can move on. Uh, I actually woke up at the end. Yeah. And I saw them. I watched them lance two polyps on the screen. Man. But and then saw the head of a penis. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a polyp, Doc. <laughs> and, uh, but I felt nothing, and I don't know if that was actually the end or just at some point. And because right after that, within five minutes, I was done. At least yeah. I felt that way. So it where might have been go? halfway through when I saw that, and then what, it just what office did you go to? What where did you go? What doctor office? Oh, somewhere out in in Clive. Oh. Uh, Did you hear the music? Whatever the, the <laughs> endoscopy, uh, endoscopy, endoscopy, whatever. My endoscopy. My my sister. Yeah. Uh, my sister works at uh, at Methodist in the oh. endoscopy. My sister in law does. Gotcha. Yeah. No, but... this was my doctor. Have you guys? Have either one of you watched Love on the Spectrum? No. No. Well, there's an Indian guy on Love on the Spectrum, and my doctor looked exactly like him. <laughs> and he comes in, and he's talking to me, and I'm thinking, oh, shit. Because he looked like, I mean, he, he in a way, he in a way performed, <laughs> behaved like he was on the spectrum a little bit. Same like, Dr. Dr. Vinny Boombat. <laughs> but he had, he had the, like, his eyes, because there's, on, there's another kid on on love on the spectrum that he when he gets his first interview he's like i am so and so and i'm going to go and i really want to find a girlfriend and he's i'm just am i doing my eyebrows right i just i just want to make sure i'm doing my eyebrows right so you, what you is can it tell, on <laughs> it's on netflix <laughs> and so you can tell you that get some better medical care he's a very <laughs> this dude like he's very like happy go lucky yeah. and everybody loves him so you can tell like he's been taught to do yeah, that, right, exactly. and like right. no, do your eyebrows. Everybody thinks you're happy yeah. or whatever. So anyway, this guy, the doctor, yeah. is talking to me before, <laughs> and his he's like his eyes <laughs> eyes are this big. Do you have any questions for me? Like he's like he struggles with eye contact. Yeah. He's, I'm a doctor. I have to have bedside manner. <laughs> like <laughs> make sure my eyes are make sure that I'm not mm, this guy's. This guy's scared. He's about to get something in his uh, ass. I got to make sure that he knows I'm alert. <laughs> I, I will be hugging you during the whole procedure. Uh, so uh, anyway, it would not it would not be an episode of our podcast if we didn't go to a break right after an awkward moment. So <laughs> right, yeah, I did. I, um, I again. I will. I should just play a clip when I say I apologize. To, to Rob and Christy at Revelton and to Jeff at Gravitate Coworking. But we're going to take a break now. And we'll yeah, get you do, March you're going to have to do like a mash up of all the time. <laughs> all the, I know I should. I should pull the best of, of the worst of transitions from false starts. That's what we should. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. Why take the best corn in the world and make it into fuel when you could make it into whiskey? That's the question that launched Revelton. Iowa's most visible and fastest growing distillery. Owners Rob and Christy Taylor embrace the grain to glass philosophy, sourcing ingredients locally and overseeing on-premises production and bottling at their facility in Osceola. One sip and you'll agree that Revelton's handcrafted whiskeys, gins and vodkas are the best you've ever tasted. And with the launch of their rye whiskey, made with 100% Iowa grown rye and corn, and their new bourbon coming soon, there's more Revelton to love than ever. Iowa's own Revelton Distillery. ReveltonDistillery.com The great thing about working from home is working from home. The worst thing is working from home, especially for face-to-face -face collaborations with customers and coworkers. And let's face it, coffee shop meetings are neither private nor professional. So skip the trip to Starbs and investigate Gravitate Coworking Space. For more than 10 years, Gravitate has provided large and small office and conference spaces perfect for hosting meetings, workshops, or other events, as well as private phone booths for confidential conversations. Plus, all spaces include secure fiber internet, free coffee, and access to a kitchenette. 
All you need is your laptop. Gravitate does the rest. And renting space at Gravitate is surprisingly affordable. An hour of office space costs about the same as venti caramel macchiatos and breakfast sandwiches for two. Daily and monthly rates are also available with no long-term commitment. Learn more at GravitateCoworking.com. That's GravitateCoworking.com. All right, and we're back with uh, Willie Farrell and Bill Blank on a new episode of False Starts. Uh, before we, uh, Bill's pouring the whiskey, it looks like. That's, that's a scotch, that's a really. Scotch, a little scotch. When I built the bar, this was one of my first purchases, specifically for Willie. There you go. Willie just took off in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Talk, really? talk different black people. Really? White ask people. You. Is there one white guy that he looks like? Look at him. <laughs> Lewis Gossett Jr. had enough. <laughs> I've always said he looks like Samuel Jackson. Really just decided he looks like every fucking black actor on planet Earth. <laughs> Malcolm, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, King, King guy. Tiny Zeus Lister go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd like to remind everybody from the beginning that we had a sensor on the front of this podcast. So I would just like to remember there was an explicit warning here. So I did a show Willie, with Willie. Willie. <clears throat> the is fantastic, by the way. What's that, Willie? I actually did a corporate show uh, a year or so ago uh, in Revelton. It's down there right by Lakeside, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's yep. fantastic. I went in there and the people were fantastic and everything. The liquor was great. It was wonderful. Rob and Christy, another set of South Siders. So yeah, no, I went to high school with place, them. And, yeah, that place is fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. speaking of South Side, I got to ask you. There's how, a Rowlton bottle right there. I know. How yeah, big. I didn't even do that on purpose. <clears throat> how big of a family do you have, Willie? Because I'm pretty sure I went to school with a feral when I was in like second or third grade. Well, and I mean, before Willie answers that, I want to say one thing. Yes. Speaking of him calling my dog every black actor that he can think of, <laughs> Willie, everybody in this fucking town is Willie's cousin. It's true. <laughs> I grew up, I grew up going to all the inner city schools, and I promise you, everybody was always talking about he's my cousin. He's my Willie. Willie is like black people when it comes to cousins. It's right. Everybody's just fucking. You got a bottle at the end of your name. I'm pretty sure I'm related to you. Um, <laughs> well, how old are you? I'll tell you which one of my nieces. So I'm 53. I, I went to uh, I went to Mit Mitchell Elementary, and I swear they lived like right around the corner from there. Because here's the weird thing: I'm not related to any Farrells. My my last name is actually really proud of. My father changed our name because the gangster thing. I got um, you. Okay. But uh, my mother came from the south side of Des Moines. She had 10 brothers. I can, On my mother's side, I've got 41 first cousins. And on my father's side, I've got <laughs> What's the whole south side then? Yeah. Well, I mean, well, the Morrows, the Catalvos. Oh, yeah. The Girls, I mean, I, I'm all cousins with all of those people. Yeah. 41 first cousins. first cousins. Here's the weird thing. And I'm the youngest of that bunch. I'm the youngest of my generation. I have, I mean, I, I, got, I, mean, I got first cousins that are 95. That, I mean, it's uh, and I'm 67, and out of the 41, there's still 24 left, uh, left, and I'm and I'm the youngest at 67. So they you, know, you, can't, you can't kill them. That's good stock. So yeah, you can't, can't kill them. Kill them. <laughs> kill them. They stay away. They stay alive. Forever. That's it. see that was your dad's. Your dad had like that. He was the gangster. He yeah. had a, like a gangster death. Like yeah. he was like Jesus absolving you. So he he died on the on the what proverbial cross oh my so God. that your whole <laughs> family would live that's right yeah, yeah, yeah really long long time. Time. <laughs> i gotta go to confession this weekend yeah, just for the whole podcast about this thing about being vulnerable it's weird my father died when i was first of all my dad was kind of a gangster but i grew up with weird shit i mean i, I can remember jimmy hoppin in my house i can remember the Harvey wolf drivers came to our house and played basketball i'm just weird shit but he died when i was 11 and then i had a brother that was killed in a plane crash with rocky marciano when i was 13. Uh, so that was like a year and a half period period of time, and I, as I look back on that, I, I've got arrested development. I think my both my brothers and my sister did that. After I got to be thirteen, I, I didn't I didn't grow up right. I didn't have a father, and and, and I didn't really. Uh, I don't think I, I ever really processed it. You know, I, it was weird enough with my brother, my father at eleven, and when my brother, who was my hero at thirteen, died, I, I've never really ever 
And I, and I look at my two brothers, they they really didn't fucking deal with it, right? And neither did my sister. I and mean, it's a weird thing because if anybody should have probably went and got some kind of therapy at that time, it should have been us kids. And we didn't. And so, you know, then you just go, oh, well, I'll, I'll be all right. I'll continue along. And, you know. Well, the term yeah. grief counseling didn't exist back no, then. No, no, no. We, we had rubbed dirt on. That was our <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was Literally. Yeah. 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 And my mother, my poor mother, I mean, she lost her husband and, and one of her kids. You know, and, and in then two years, time. Yeah. And, and yeah, and then she had to finally go to work. She never worked because my dad you know, never had to work. And, and I mean, it's just it's weird things when you look back on things. There was nothing there to uh, support us at the time. You know what I mean? And as you get older in life, and you, you just keep on burying that stuff or piling stuff on top of or whatever. You know, as you get older in life, you finally realize, God damn, I probably really should have talked to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and that's the argument that, that I think I have a lot. When people say, well, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, this didn't happen. Or they, we yeah. didn't have this. We didn't have that. Right. No, you had it. Yeah. We didn't have the outlet to report it or right. to acknowledge it. Exactly. That's exactly. that's the difference. Yeah. Well, it was there, but it was also taboo. It was right. also. That's what I, yeah. You, know, you, yeah. You, didn't get, you didn't talk about it. Well, there we wasn't had just, anybody to identify. Before we, uh, <clears throat> Willie and I were talking before the show started, and I was like, you know, could you imagine? Uh, we were talking about a, a a friend of ours that died who I've talked about a bunch of times. Um, but he was one of those old, old school Italian, just fucking racist. as fuck, and just, just, you know, it's a, and homophobic, you he know, gave me the best compliment when I was first starting off and he did the same thing to Billy. And this is when I was first starting off in the eighties and come to one of my shows. And I said, uh, so what'd you think? Buff? and here's your, here was his critique of me. You know what? You're about as funny as a fucking rodeo clown. That's <laughs> but anyway, he said something even worse to Billy. His, <laughs> his, his, his nephew yeah. um, came out yeah. not too long ago, and we were talking. And he he's died. He died last year yeah. or a couple years ago. But we were talking about how we wonder if he even knew or how he would have reacted. And, but we also knew him well enough to go. Well, well, that this was his namesake. This kid, his yeah. nephew. So, right, like, we're like, I guarantee, knowing him, he would have changed everything. Like what he yeah. said so many years ago, he would have been like, Ah, hey, you know what? These fucking gay guys got it made, man. They just suck each yeah, other's yeah, dicks, yeah. and they fucking, you know, like that would have been that would have been his <laughs> attitude about it. Like, he was very racist. Yeah. Until he finally met Tim Brown of the Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The black guys so bad. Hey, so bad. Uh, as, so bad. To, as long as they go to Notre Dame. Yeah. So uh yeah. rest of them, man. Fuck yeah, those yeah, guys. Yeah. But exactly. he uh um no, I completely fucking forgot where I was going with that. Uh but anyway. Acknowledging uh, things in the past yeah. is just wasn't done. Well, yeah, and so uh oh, we were talking about how could you imagine if like social media sucks right now. It's a cesspool right now. But could you imagine when like the nineties, even maybe the mid eighties to the to early nineties, if social media existed like it does now, how much homophobic shit would have been out there just yeah. free flowing? Right. Like yep. just caught like how many more more homosexuals <laughs> and and trans and other people would have felt bo even more like how many more probably would have killed themselves exactly. and, and ostracized. And stuff, and, yeah, yeah, during that time, it would have been a hundred times worse. Well, this kid that's a friend of ours that finally came out, he's 40 years old, and we love this kid. And, and if you knew him, he's, he's a gem. And it, I, it almost made me cry thinking about how this kid I've known him my whole life. And how he had to hide all those years, or felt felt that he had to hide. Yeah, right. And, and it breaks my heart that you know that that that's what had to happen. I mean, that's the one good thing. I mean, there's a lot of things in this world that are fucked up now, but one of the good things is hopefully people will be more accepted, and all the people that don't think that you know you should live that way are hopefully die soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I mean, I remember. Um. I remember my sister's wedding back. I was 19, I think, when she got married. And her best friend is a lesbian. Yeah. And her best friend and and her girlfriend were at the wedding. Mm -hmm. Best friend was in the wedding. Yeah. 
and she was, you know, a more, um, it's weird. I would say a more masculine, like, you know, more like a bull, you know, yeah, like more, like. more, yeah. Like more, I don't think, more, I think right. you're supposed yeah. to say that. Yeah. yeah. That's what, that's what they say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, um, but she was, she's, it was weird. She's feminine, but she always had short hair and hairy armpits. Yeah, okay. You know, like, right. pretty, like good short, pretty good shirt. But she style. was, yeah, it's like, <laughs> but she wasn't like, she wasn't athletic yeah, oh, or anything. Oh. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I remember her and her girlfriend being like affectionate, like, where, you know, it's picture time, all that stuff. So everybody's around. Sure. And I remember them like being huggy, kissy, and stuff. And I remember my grandpa just looking at him like, "What the fuck?" I just remember the look on his face. <laughs> like he was just, he just it was he couldn't stop looking at him. Here's something I don't understand anymore, though. It's like you know, everybody in the world's getting a little more sensitive, and you have to watch. You know, you have to watch the things you say about certain people. You know, you thank God we don't use the N word anymore. I think that's great. And, uh, you know, now let's not make fun of Asians, not make fun of uh, Native Americans. That's great. But how come Italians, you can still take a free shot of fucking Italians? <laughs> <laughs> they, no, think about it. I mean, everything now you... off limits, but we still got fucking Mario and Luigi from Dunk. <laughs> <laughs> still around. Yeah, why isn't that racist? Yeah, yeah no shit. How come, how come Nintendo hasn't canceled them like, exactly. but you know what? like Personally, Aunt I, Jemima got canceled? I, I don't give a fuck. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yo, Chef Boy, he's around. We got some dangle on a fucking can of spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's fine. But no. But Even uh, that, you can still say dangle. People can say dangle. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's all right. Cool. Oh, I didn't say that when I was not on the South Side. I no, didn't, I didn't say that. Did. But, I mean, <laughs> but the thing is, is that it's still, I mean, Mar I saw there's a movie out and there's Mario and Luigi. I went, really? And they all do that. They all go, oh, <laughs> I'm going to win. Uh, yeah, and they weren't even played. They, were, they weren't even played by Italian actors. No, I said that, that. There you go. That's wrong. That's right. Yeah, that's the other right? thing. That's, yeah. You know what? That's something when it comes to the social change and, and all that stuff. That's that's something right there that's kind of changed. I'm seeing a change in the landscape that's bothering me a bit. Is this assertion now that a straight person can't play a gay person? Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. You know, this thing where you can't play something that you're not. Yeah. It's called acting. It's called acting for a reason. <laughs> for instance, if they make Forrest Gump right now, uh, Lieutenant Dan, they'd have to guy find some guy with no pockets. That actually had right. no legs. And, and, yeah. and, and it actually There's plenty of actors out there with no legs. Why didn't you use one of them? And like Tom Hanks couldn't be Forrest Gump. You'd have to find a real Forrest fucking Gump. And the movie never get made because yeah. motherfucker. Because he's making fun line. of the way people yeah. talk. You got to find somebody if, that really talks if like. If you that. got a real Forrest Gump, you could make the movie because he couldn't finish a line. Listen, that is why. That is why Tropic Thunder is an amazing movie. Oh, yeah. Because you know when when yeah when yeah. Robert Downey Jr. is playing a white guy who plays a black guy and and then you got well, you know ben, what's funny then you got Simple Jack and I so. have worked with Brandon T. Jackson. Yeah, I I, I did a week with him in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, and that his part in that movie. Where he's, you know, he's always getting pissed off at Robert Downey Jr. Like, oh yeah, oh you gonna have a barbecue? Oh hey, yeah, barbecue. You know? He's, I think, his part. He that came from somewhat of a real place for oh, him. I, I bet it did. Because he's, um, probably the, if not the, fucking weirdest. Top two or three weirdest people I've ever really? fucking been around in my life. <laughs> You've been around some weird ones. He was busting out by the Bible. And it, I mean, I swear to God, you couldn't open a page that didn't have highlights. Wow. And and he's like telling me all this shit. And he's talking about um the how the Jews stole his religion. Really? So, yeah. so they're the original. Like it's like this black Hebrew. I I, I can't. So what were you were you? I can't remember what the name of it was. At one point, one of the 
the one of the last shows, there was a whole big ass group of dudes from this religion. They all had like all this garb, really? tradition, like garb on. I don't like all this crazy shit. Those- no, like it was like I think people would watch them and think they were Muslim or something, yeah, but yeah. they're not. They're not. There's no, they're like, like there's a Hebrew. Wow. It's okay, something yeah. Hebrew to it. Is he still doing that kind of thing? Have you yeah, him? he's like he thinks. There's like some island they're all going to go to when, and the world's going to end and they're going to be the you only know, ones left. No, all that's that just because, I mean, you've probably thought so much deeper than this than we have because, I mean, you proverbially on death's door at one point. Uh, the afterlife. What is there any kind of thoughts you have on that? What, what do you think? Of, was there a certain time when you were going through chemo you're thinking, what's going to, where am I going to go? What's going to happen? You know, growing up, uh, I was scared to death of dying. That was my biggest fear. And, you know, my mom once told me not to ever worry about it because I'll just die when I fall asleep. So Mm -hmm. guess what? I never wanted to go do. (laughs) So you want to talk about therapy? I want to talk about the start of my fucking therapy. But uh, yeah, once you're on chemo, don't go to. Right. Also, yeah, like also don't the God, first God, night in the God. hospital. It's never a good idea to Google survival rates of esophageal cancer. That's not a real fun time either. Yeah. But I honestly, I think my mindset changed around that when my dad passed away, uh-huh. because I truly believe I watched him. I watched the Holy Spirit bring him home. You know what? Because I was at a calm. And it and and I I knew I was at peace, yeah. and honestly, since then I've not been afraid of it. I do believe that there's an afterlife. I'm sure I'll probably have to sit in some purgatory for some while because yeah. I'm not a perfect person, and that's fine. But um, yeah, I I think there's an afterlife. Uh, I don't know what it looks like. I have no idea. And anybody that tells you that they do do know what it looks like is full of shit. So, what do you think it is? Or are you just comfortable saying you don't know? You just think it exists? I I just, I don't, I mean, how deep do we want to go? Do I really, do I believe? Let's fucking go. Okay, so do I believe, do I believe that Jesus was the son of God? Absolutely. Do I believe what he said, that it's a paradise? I do. That could mean different things for other people. You know what I mean? Maybe it's. Do you think that that could possibly be like, almost like a dream state? Like your inner consciousness. I'll tell you what. Like how that just. I'll tell you what. What makes me think that, Willie? You, you're, I, you're Catholic, correct? Yes. Yeah, so in the Nicene Creed, when he says, "the the to fall asleep and resurrect later," yeah. that's what I think is. I mean, how? What does that mean? Yeah. Does that mean that I'm I'm in a in a a state of somewhere else, and then I only, not everybody's sitting in heaven, and everybody goes at the same time when he finally opens up the door. Like I, I don't know, but that that part of the Nicene Creed trips me up a little bit. You know what? I I was present when my mother died in uh, 1995. My I just uh, my my wife was uh, we were first starting dating, and uh, my mom had Alzheimer's for for many years. And when anyway, she's in the hospital, and the whole family's there, and I'm, I'm holding her hand, she's in a coma at the time, so she's not really doing much. And my uh, sister-in-law was a nurse at the time, and she's giving us like a countdown. You know, she could tell by the heart rate what's going on. And she told us one point, it's getting close, it's getting close. And I'm watching my mother, and she's got like that coma face, kind of like that. And she stops, and her mouth shuts, and she smiles. She smiles. Yep. And my sister-in-law said, she's gone. And I turned, and you can ask my wife this. I turned to my wife, and I said, did you just see what I see, or am I dreaming this because I want that for her? She says, no, she, she just smiled. Right. So I, I don't know. My mother was a very religious, very beautiful, lovely. She was a saint. And, you know, uh, but what I saw and my wife can verify it was something good happened to her at the end of her time. That's I was so, this this, this yeah. weekend that I went on this last weekend. Mm-hmm. I've went on probably seven or eight of them. Mm-hmm. There's a gentleman that, that gives his witness every year and it's about his niece. And he tells a similar story. How she she was like I, I I'm sure I don't remember all the details, but the, the, his niece was eight or nine years old, and she was dying, and the whole family was in the room, and the exact same thing. He swears 
he saw her, the pain left, and she opened her eyes and she smiled and looked up and then she was gone. The exact same thing. Now, let me give you the other side of the story. My cousin Rudy, who's a fucking uh, 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 with the outfit in Chicago, comes into town afterwards off of Pearl. And he says, mm-hmm. oh, so sorry about um, Aunt Carmella. Are you okay? And I told him exactly what I saw. He went, that's good, cuss. That's good. You know, I had Muddy died the other day. He was open. His eyes started screaming. <laughs> 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 it was like demons came and got me. Listen, listen. If you if you believe when they come know, and get Willie, listen. If you believe Willie. one, <laughs> if you believe one, you got to believe the other. <laughs> so okay, uh, so 100%. I'm gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate. Okay. Uh, now. And I don't say this to dispel anyone's beliefs, anything that makes anyone feel comfort by any means. You and I have had this conversation. You're not yeah. going to offend me. <laughs> um, can that situation pos- possibly just be part of what happens in your brain chemically as you're dying? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it can. Like, Absolutely. Um, that. Like we, if we're a faithful person, we're going to take that smile sure. and right. we're going to run with it. Right. Oh my God. She just went to, you're her. going she to just, believe what is well, just most all comfortable for I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you how, how faith works in different ways and how it, it can change your mind one way or another. Uh, I was told at one time when people die, they weigh them. And when people die, they weigh a certain amount, but there's always like something like six ounces that they uh, unaccounted for. And some people want to believe that's their that's spirit. That's the soul of ways sick oh, down. I right. talk to some people that actually work in them. They say, no, that's just gases being left. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so you want to believe of faith in God and the spirit. You want to goes, believe what fits and your say, No, they just farted or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's the old age thing of yeah. whether or not you believe in, in, uh, in God created heaven and earth or you believe in natural evolution. I sure. mean, it's. And science, and I, I can vividly remember sitting in a church service one time where they talked about the the the, the argument or the or the discussion between faith and science. Mm-hmm. It's it's whatever narrative you want to believe. Yeah. Do, well, and but I, but here's but here's how I come. That's what. But here's how I combat that. If you truly believe that God created everything, then He's created those chemical reactions that's caused. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so yeah, I I've always thought, you know, I remember my dad, and we've talked about before how like my whole fear of death brought about the anxiety and everything back right. when I was a kid. I remember my dad saying to me that because <clears throat> that's one thing I remember finding out. Everybody has this little bit different belief, and that's the thing about being a human being and knowing that our death is imminent, is we all have to come up could come to terms with that somehow. How do we how do you live your life every day knowing it's going to end? I mean, that's crazy to really think about. And <clears throat> so, you know, oftentimes I just kind of default to thinking that that's what this is. That's what all this faith is. That's what religion is, is, is letting us feel better about that, about right. just mm-hmm. the fact that we're going to die someday. There's nothing we can do about it. And if there's nothing after that, then, Man, what's the you know a lot, like a lot what's of my the point? Cousins, the hoods in Chicago, these guys that are gang members, they basically they basically believe when lights go out, lights go out, and that's right. how they can yeah. that's how they can reconcile get, being gangsters. Exactly. Yeah. Well, in, in a in a in a in a form of control, that's what religion. There's a difference between mm-hmm. faith and religion. Religion is used, I think, to control the masses. Mm-hmm. When you looked at early, you know colonial times and whatever when they talked about divine you you were you know they came from the divinity and whatever and it didn't matter you were born you were either destined to be going to heaven or you were a sinner it didn't matter you were born that way and they used that to control people i truly believe that religion is used you can look at it now and see how religion is being used well i mean it's a religion is people, whatever religion is a larger scale version of santa claus it's Correct. Used, used, Absolutely. Use Santa Claus to control their children when they're not Correct. able to watch them. 
Now, so then they use God to do the same thing when it's not Christmas time. There's a difference between faith and religion. I have faith in that I believe that if I am a good, here's, 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 this is the best way for me to describe it. Religion will tell you that a gay man is going to hell, it's a sin. You'll never convince me that if there's a guy who uh, dedicated his entire life to to childhood cancer and worked in the depths of Africa to save children, but he liked to suck a dick every once in a while, Jesus is going to say, sorry, you're not allowed in here. Right. I'm not buying I that. I, I agree with right. you. I agree yeah. with you 100%. I'm not buying that. There's, the, there's no life. way. That's one of my problems but, with the Catholic religion today. Yeah, 100%. And I had that conversation when I gave my witness this weekend, Willie. I said, I said, uh, I uh, this because my we're getting deep into the weeds now. No, my, this is, this is what my this is for. witness was based off spirituality, and I talked about how I've struggled with my spirituality, but I've also relied on it during my divorce, and I and 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 how I I fought what I believed, and I believed God wasn't helping, but he but he that but then later on I met Stacy, and it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I leaned on my spirituality during cancer, but. I'm Catholic and I struggle every single day with how they handle the LGBTQ issues yes. because I have a transgender son. Okay. I tr- I believe him. I love him. I love him for who he is. And I believe that God doesn't make a mistake. And you'll never convince me that God won't accept him. You'll never convince me of that. And I fight I, that. I, with I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. And I fight that with the Catholic Church and yes. what they teach every day. Yeah. So how do I how do I rectify? that I don't believe everything the Catholic Church wants to teach me, but I still want to be faithful to my God. Well, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a fallen Catholic myself because of all these things. Uh, and I, I, there's only one thing I can go by because I, I think it, it actually stands for all religions, which when you think about it, there's so many different religions. Who, who's the right one? Who's, exactly. I think uh, it's so yeah. arrogant. You, you heard the old any... joke about that St. Peter showing the guy around heaven. He says, here's the Presbyterians. Here's the, and then all of a sudden you see a, a place that is all bricked off, a big brick wall. He says, who's that? He says, that's the Catholics. They think they're the only ones up here. So, I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, it's the truth. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. So my thing is uh, golden rule. That's it. Treat others right. as you. And then when you think about it, I mean, that's a big thing in the Catholic religion. Treat others as you want to be treated. Right. Just be a good fucking person. Right. I don't think, I mean, I think if I'm a good person and I do all the things right, I don't think if, if I eat on Friday that I'm going to hell. I, I really don't. But you, so, listen, well, and look I, at all the directions you can take that to. Look at that sucking dick every Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, look, look at how many directions the you other can day. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, well, just look at how many directions you can take that too. Like the Catholic, if you were having this argument with a, a, a Catholic priest, say, mm-hmm. right, where Chris says, I have a transgender son. I don't believe God made a mistake. God made him the way he is. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Catholics are going to say, God doesn't make mistakes. That's a girl. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. And so to me, to me, the counter argument to that is, well, if God doesn't make mistakes, then he made a girl that wanted to be a boy. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like you can just keep going. Yeah, yeah. He also, and, on he also gave her day. He also gave him the ability to realize that who he is and what he is. Yeah. Yeah. God so, doesn't affect free will. So which one is? Yeah. Does he make I, mistakes or I, not? I, I, see, I, I've always had problems with the fact that you know, he's an all-knowing guy. He's an all-loving guy. Well, if he's all-loving, I mean, why, why is you know, like, why does why do we have all this shit going on? And, and if he knows and he's all-knowing, why is he letting all this bad shit happen? I mean, I just don't. Understand. Well, it's because we're so small, and it's all so well, big. Another thing, let's talk about that. We'll this. never understand. I, I was in Florida this uh, last year, and I was looking around. And all the, I, I, there was the stars around. I said, "God, there's a lot of stars." And some guys next to me, he's astrology guys. Says, Do you realize there's as many stars in the sky as there are grains of sand? Have you ever heard that? I mean, you look. At I, it, I've heard that, but now I mean, pick up a, pick up a I'd like to know how they know that. I know, but I mean, even if it's close, even if it's not on. the if right. there's that many stars and that many galaxies and that's many, and if we are yeah. shallow enough to think that we're the only, we're it. It's, yeah, we're the only ones, right? We're the only ecosystem that somehow yeah. developed life. No, exactly. I, I, I mean, see, I enjoy thinking about this and mm-hmm. talking about this stuff because I'm a good alien anyway. Though. Well, I, 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 I think I really about all this. Find, <laughs> he can find another. Well, just the different, like 
that's another theory that it's all plausible. Yeah, like yeah. the matrix is fucking plausible to me. Uh, yeah. Like we could all just be a fucking computer program yes. for some alien life form just having a good yeah. fucking time. Right. Like we could be the Sims to someone else. Exactly. Yes, and, and absolutely. There could, there could just be all these different scenarios and, and different things have brought me comfort at different times. Like when I was a kid and I was worried, like I was talking about my dad. I remember he said one time, well, I don't think, he said, I think everybody goes to heaven no matter what. And he and but he goes, but I think when you go to heaven, you don't remember anybody that's alive still. That you he goes, I don't see how I don't he goes, I don't like the I don't think of the concept of them looking down and watching yeah. you. How could you how could that be heaven then? How is that paradise yeah. if you can't be with right. the people yeah. you love? Yeah. So he's like, I think you lose all your memory of that. And then as soon as yeah. you show up, yeah. everybody knows who you are and remembers everything. Well, let me let me ask you this. You, you, you're married for 30 years, and, and God forbid your wife passes away. And five years later, you, you, you get married, and, and, and you, you're married to this next person for, for 10, 15 years, and you both die at the same time. Who's your wife in heaven? Well, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, no, God, God tell you right now, that doesn't sound like heaven, having two wives. Say- I call that the Auntie Doty clause. I had an aunt, my aunt Doris, we call her Auntie Doty. She was married <laughs> to my mother. Doty clause. Yeah. She was married to my uncle Gum, my brother and brother. She's married to my uncle John. That's the greatest thing ever. Auntie Doty was married to Uncle John for 20 years. Uncle John dies. He, she marries Uncle Dale, who's another great guy. And he dies. And then now Auntie Doty lived five more years. Now she's up in heaven. There's Dale. There's my Uncle John. Auntie Doty clause. What do you do? I right. mean, nobody knows. I think that maybe because again, it's a state of mind. Yeah. So yeah. uh Auntie Doty is there for both of them. So it's a menage de trois in heaven. And she's with who she chooses. Maybe that's the paradise they were looking for. <laughs> or, 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 or whatever. And, I mean, and let's say if heaven's so great, I, let's be honest. If you're Tom Brady and you die and go to heaven, they can't be as good as what's going on down here, is it? <laughs> right. You don't have seven Super Bowls. He just right doesn't right. wake up sore. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. like hey i still got everything i'm just not sore but i don't know i i remember thinking to myself like i took what my dad said yeah and then i started thinking like maybe maybe what it is is you die and every because time is infinite at that point mm-hmm. everybody that you left behind you can walk into a movie theater and watch the rest of their life mm-hmm. and and their life is the length of a movie to you yeah so everybody's life that you know is like a two-hour movie you get out of the movie and now they're there the movie ends with them dying and I just don't, I mean, I'm now they're the there you know what i mean like huh? i was thinking about my grandma if if my grandma was watching my movie yeah. in my there's an old saying I remember. Um, if you watch the movie The Doors at the beginning, there's Jim um, Val Kilmer. Jim is doing a poem, mm-hmm. and I, there's a line. There's a part where he says, "Did you have a good world when you died? Mm-hmm. Enough to base a movie on." Mm-hmm. And so then I, I don't know. All that just came together for me, and I always thought that was one of my motivations in life was. I want to have a life somebody would write a movie about, or at least a maybe. Show about yeah, I mean, have yeah. have that effect in some yeah. way, mm-hmm. whether it's on a single person or just leave the world some kind of uh, leave a dent. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, I, I I just I just keep going back to the fact that there is just a fundamental difference between faith and religion. Religion is used to control, and you can just look across the country right now and see what they're trying to control you with when it comes to religion in this country with legislation and everything else, they're trying to control the masses with it. And that is not in my mind. And and that's something that's been going on for centuries. If that's the case though, here, answer me this, Chris, if that, if that's the case, then why, why are you a practicing Catholic? Why are you labeling it? Like if 
if there's a difference to you between faith and religion, right? Why do you have to have that religion? Because Catholicism is a religion, correct? So yeah. if you have faith, if religion because, is because good, like you know what I'm saying, like right. well, okay, why because go to I the think, Catholic Church? Because I think the rituals itself in the Catholic Church, I believe when the priest bless and turns that that is actually the body and blood of Christ. I believe that. I believe the tenets of the Catholic Church. What I don't believe, and I'm the one that does drugs, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, You're but I, but what I don't no, believe, I just, no, I just no, but what I don't believe, <laughs> what I don't believe is, is that people that will hijack that those things for their own personal agendas. That's mm -hmm. what I don't believe and don't and don't agree with. Every Sunday. Go to mass every Sunday. Yeah, I went to adoration over the weekend. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, went to adoration and, and, over and the, the weekend, fact, and the fact that you have to deal with what, what what's your what your son's going through. Listen, I I said it. Mean. I said it in my witness. I said I know that there are people in the Catholic Church, and I know there are people in this church that I go to mass with every day, and I know there's probably people in this room that think, think my, that my son going is going to hell and is mentally ill. And I will tell you, I don't believe that. I don't either. And I got no problems putting them right on the spot. Because yeah. as far as I'm concerned, if I believe what is right, I'll fight tooth and nail from the inside. I don't give a fuck. But it'll it won't change the masses, but yeah. it'll make me feel everybody. It'll make me feel better, <laughs> and I know I'm getting straight through the pearly gates because I realize that Jesus is not a fucking hypocrite. Now let me ask you a question: If you feel that way, you got bless you. I'm glad you do. What do you think of people like me, a fallen Catholic, but I still think I'm a good person, and Billy? Who uh, obviously is a, some in some kind of saint? Uh, saint I, I don't. I, I don't <laughs> listen, do I do I think because you don't go to mass every day and you don't take communion, you're going to hell? No, I don't. I as I said before, that doctor who's sitting in 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 in, in the jungles of, of Africa saving kids, but he's gay. Yeah. He's he. It's what you do every day. I, I go to mass and I and I take the communion because it gives me peace every week. That's I okay. enjoy it. It's something that I do with my wife that we enjoy doing together. Yeah. It that's all that needs to be said. That's, that's, that's the only needs explanation needed. Makes, yeah. It makes my wife and I a better marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. I, if I didn't go to mass every listen, this whole thing about it's a mortal sin if you miss mass, give me a break. All right. Yeah. Now my sister in law, who I love dearly, would tell you. You you didn't go to mass this week. You're in trouble. Oh my my father in law mother in law ninety four ninety. Uh, they still I mean they got to get the ash Wednesday. They got to get that. I got to get they got to get all that. And that's and you know I'll gladly bring them. I mean that's you know. My my Atari Mutombo is asleep. You know and he just here's blocked, a, he blocked his shot he here here's <laughs> why I know when my. Uh, before I was born, my mom and dad lost a child. He, my, uh -huh. my, my brother put a bag over his head and died. And I remember my dad telling me years later he was distraught because he didn't think Cass was going to go to heaven because he had never been baptized. And at the time, that was... You, they're the, in, they're right? The, they're the and the, and the minister or, told him, the minister yeah. told him, that that absolutely that, that that Jesus the Jesus that he knew and the loving God that he knew would never turn his back on a child. Exactly. Yeah. So I, it's funny, you know, Catholic people are the the ones that I've always found to be the most superstitious. Oh yeah. You know, and the oh, most yeah. like believing in fucking ghosts and just weird shit. You know. It's, <laughs> Listen. It's so funny, I, like. It's all what you truly believe, Bill. I went to confession this week. I, I went to reconciliation on Saturday night, and I, I'm being 100% transparent. I confessed everything that I could think of for the last year, and I walked out of there, and I bawled kneeling at the kneeling for probably 10 minutes because I felt so clean. It's clean as Bill after his colon oscopy. Yes, I, right. I, I, all the shit just slipped right out. <laughs> and I even called my wife, like in tears, telling her I was sorry for being a terrible I'm, You husband. know what? I'm, I'm, I'm jealous of you that you have found something like that. To, I mean, because I, 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 I'm not a religious man. I'm a spiritual guy. I, 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 want, I want that. I, I want to have that kind of... Um, Willie, yeah, I'll tell I want you that this. peace of Willie, mind. I would love to have it. Willie, I just I'll tell you logically this. can't. Now, I, I, I realize this is going out on a limb. 
I would invite you to that retreat mm-hmm. and, and as a participant. And I will bet, even if you didn't go back to church ever again, you would have that feeling. Uh, well, you know what? I, I, I think I'll take you up on it because uh, I'm 60, 70 years old. And I'm watching people drop around me like flies. And I definitely, I, I know wherever my, I want to go wherever my mom went because it seemed like uh, she went to the right spot. I bet. If you know, that's right. Well, yeah. And I, I remember having many, you know, the old podcast me and Bush had, yeah. and we had a retired Methodist preacher on there and we got into all this. And I remember him saying that God is love. He goes, you think Anne Frank didn't go to, you think Anne Frank went to hell? Yeah. Right. That's crazy. Exactly. He's right. like, that's crazy. Right. Because she so, just happened to be Jewish. Yeah, I mean, like, then he's on. like, there's just, he goes, God, there's room. He goes, well, there's room in the world for every religion. So now we're going to get into some crazy. This is, I, yep. Okay, Chris Chris dies. Chris dies at a ripe old age of 97 years or whatever. I'll You're take dying. it. You close your eyes. What now? Where are we? What do, what do we do? What do you guys do? You're dead. You're older. No, 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 no. What, what do you <laughs> do? Where, where, where are you at right after, right after you take your last breath? What happens? I think I think the Holy Spirit delivers me to Jesus at the at, at the gates, and I get to see my dad. I get to see my brother for the first time because I never got to yeah. meet him, which is a regret that I've had my entire life. I, I I look all the time and wonder what my life would have been like if I had an older brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's what I truly believe. I, and and I will tell you, when my dad passed away, mm-hmm. I was forty forty. I don't know, 44, something like that. Uh, So my brother had been dead for almost 45 years. The very first thing out of my mom's mouth when dad died was he gets to see my baby before me. Mm -hmm. Like she was jealous. Yeah, yeah, she was jealous. (laughs) And and the fact is, is that that's what I believe is I'm going to be able to finally see my brother. That's great. I I mean, that's what I'm hoping. I've got I got parents and two brothers up there right now. I mean. So, I mean, yeah, I, that's... I think... I, I, um, I get through TSA, you know, it is in heaven. I think that I'll probably... <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'll be waiting think, in the line. I'll still be the poor pastor waiting in line. I think I'll probably, get re- I'll probably get reincarnated as a fucking tortoise and just you know, never I, die. I, that's amazing because I'm looking at you and that's exactly what <laughs> you, got, you got resting tortoise face anyway. I want to come back as Patrick yeah, Ewing yeah. the dog. I, it's fucking, I want to come I'll back be, as I want to come back as Patrick come Ewing. Back my new bowl. Yeah, <laughs> my new bowl. Patrick Ewing the dog. That's what I want Patrick to come back as. I'll, be, I'll look like that fucking Bugs Bunny cartoon when he the tortoise in the hair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let me the, let me throw this uh, let me throw this conspiracy theory at you. What if I what if I pitched you a, a conspiracy theory that we all worship the same exact God? Even Muslims, yeah. because well, there's yeah, a that's not, I, I, because there's a, a conspiracy. I would hope that's right. Right, I because mean, there's I, a gap. There's a gap in in Jesus's history from when he was a young boy to when he transferred the the, the water into wine at the at the miracle of Cana, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of people that 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 theorize that he left, and that was the Muslims' version of Muhammad. Muhammad. Really? Okay, what about the Mormons? They're God. Is that Jesus also? Dum da dum dum dum. Uh I don't know anything about the Mormon faith. So other than, Smith, other than what I watched Adler. on Big Love on HBO. So. No, you know what? You want to fucking my that favorite, poor bastard took some bullets. Oh. My favorite thing to consult about religion is South Park. Okay. You you may cancel me. Every fucking thing I do. You may cancel me, but I've never watched an episode of South Park. You need to start because <laughs> you, if you want to see everybody will dismiss it because it's a cartoon. And yeah, not no. only that it's a cartoon, but it's also very basic drawing and all that. I'm telling you right now. There is no, there is no more socially relevant I agree. and intelligent comedy on yeah. television than South Park. And it's been that way for 20 years. Listen, it's not years. that I don't think those guys are funny because their movies are fucking hysterical. Yeah. So, uh, no, I I'm saying watch it. But yeah, I'm talking social relevance. Right. I'm talking about well, the Book of every, yes, oh my God. every single week 
they are taking on like there's a there's a documentary about the making of a South Park episode and it's they go they start on Tuesday and it's out Sunday that's crazy. and it's that one episode the entire week right yeah and it's it's fucking um on point like it is current like they are spending the week you will see an episode of South Park on Sunday three days after Michael Jackson died and the whole fucking episode's about Michael Jackson died. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Out like, Tom, Tom Cruise when they didn't went to Mark yeah, Johnson. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. That was yeah. the Scientology one yeah, when, yeah. when Isaac Hayes left. Yeah. So, uh, and then they did the next episode with just dubbed Isaac Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have sex with you, children. <laughs> it was fucking hysterical. Oh, yes. Uh but I'm tell I'm serious, Chris. Like, if you want, this is the most socially relevant and intelligent comedy. But that that's interesting that, that you would talk about the, the, like you thought that Jesus could have been Mohammed at one time. But I mean, but but what but what about the Mormons? What about the John Smith guy? I mean, dude, was that? That's true? what I mean. Why is he wrong? Why why is right. how come it's just this it's universal? Just yeah. Maybe fucking David Koresh was the second I, coming. I, I mean, who, why do we who why do we get to say? I mean, there's a great line in there's a um, it's I'll, uh, I'll tell you why, a, because anybody that wants more than one wife is not fucking straight in the head. That's why. Yeah, <laughs> well, sure, that's very fucking human to me. Uh, no, no, I didn't say two women. I said a, two wives. There's and you I think about the nagging. Is that what you're going to do? I think about this a lot. Um, there's a line in. Um. Have you guys, have, Chris? Have you heard of Run the Jewels? I know Willie hasn't. Oh, yeah, no, oh I you know. do know it's a rapper. Yeah, 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 Killer yeah, Mike. Yeah. I know you and Jim Peterson. Yeah, we, I love Run yeah, the Jewels. Yeah. So there's a line that Killer Mike has in the song "Walking in the Snow," and he's talking about Dick Gregory. Yeah, and he says Dick Gregory told him this before he died, basically. Yeah, he said, "All of us." I, I, I mean, I may paraphrase it, but. All of us serve the same masters. All of us are nothing but slaves. Never forget in the story of Jesus, the hero was killed by the state. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think about that and apply it to every religious leader that wasn't uh, some form of Christian yeah. in my lifetime mm -hmm. that was immediately labeled a cult, that was immediately shut down somehow by the government right. mostly i think because of religions getting sta tax free status mm -hmm. yeah. and i think that's why the government actually goes after these people because they're not paying they start making money and they don't pay taxes that's what i that's what i think i mean why else do you go into the branch davidian compound with tanks mm -hmm. you know like so was it what why was Jesus not David Koresh way back then? What was the difference? You know what I mean? Chris wasn't sleeping with kids, he wasn't sleeping with children. Well, That'd be number one. Well, I'm just I mean, if I, we're being honest, I mean, yeah, then you can't no, but I'm saying, I, I understand Koresh, what you're saying. David Koresh, David Koresh is, is a, an absolute a fucking nut job. I get yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah. But I, I get it. But the problem is, is you got people out there that I don't know. You, you could probably come up with one or two scenarios where legit you're talking about where the person was could could have been and was 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 done out. But the majority of the ones that people know are fucking nut jobs. They're, they're well, yeah, crazy fucking but, nut jobs. But don't you don't you think Jesus would be a nut job right now? Yeah. OK. Now, if Jesus came and was preaching what he's what he preached, then he probably would not be believed. He, he wouldn't right. be believed, and right. he would absolutely right. What platforms? You think he'd be on TikTok, or you think he'd be more? I don't. I don't think he's more of a Twitter. I think he would be relabeled as Buddy Christ, like <laughs> the dogma. <laughs> the old right. step. I think he'd be a YouTube guy. He, he, YouTube he, guy. he seems like one of those guys that just opens up packages on on YouTube. Here's what would have to happen because that's mesmerizing, you know. That's that's mesmerizing. Here's what would have to happen in order for everybody to believe that it's actually Jesus. Yeah. I cannot wait to write the description of this episode, by the way. I cannot he wait. Would have to put in, 
he would have to win American Idol, American Got Talent, <laughs> and yeah. Big Brother, and the Voice, and, and the Voice, yeah. and he would just win all of them. And then everybody would finally go, you know, I think, and I think there's some magic. As long as he doesn't win, as long as he doesn't win The Apprentice, I'm all right with that. And he had to break the NCAA scoring record. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, shit! That was pissed. that was Pete Maravich. Then we missed yeah. out on that deal. All right, we gotta we gotta end this thing. It's as much fun as it's been, Willie. I can't tell you how much uh, I when I was gonna sit down with Woody Farrell, I was not prepared to debate Catholicism and spirituality, and it was the greatest. I, you know I, it was the greatest it. thing I've ever done. It's it was so up, great. Brought out the best of me because uh, I, you know I, I didn't know much about you, but. Uh, after listening to your story, what you went through, and, and the kind of person you are, I, I think uh, you're fantastic, man. I'm, well, I appreciate that. I don't know if you remember, but I, I did come to yours and Bill's show. We talked yeah. a little bit afterwards. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, I and and I would love to have you on Old Man Strength because I think that there's a whole nother gamut that we could talk about. You know what? Um, I, 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 I'm I open to do it. Let, let's talk some more. I, I would love to do right. it. Really uh, stick on afterwards. Maybe I can get your number and we can connect. So, yeah, buddy. all right. So, uh, I, if you're still listening to this after an hour and 35 minutes, you are absolutely a trooper or you've got no fucking life whatsoever. Either or way, you just had a good time because we're fucking good, entertaining. Because we're Chris. entertaining, right? Yeah. Everybody, that's one more I'm not kidding. We've had, a, we've had a steady stream of viewers this entire Mugs time. Mugs and bugs. <laughs> I'm tired of you guys making fun of Spud Webb. Leave that little bastard alone. <laughs> All right. Daniel well, Lewis. <laughs> Webster. Hey, Gary Coleman. Hey. Oh, God. You know what? Next time you do this thing, you got one more screen with him on it. That's right. We'll, we'll get a little set of headphones and everything. You're like a dog. Cut we can have some dog, Dad. <laughs> oh, God. That's right. We'll just get Michael Vick a little set of headphones and everything. We'll be good to go. Oh, God. <laughs> Minute bull. That might have been the best one. That's a deep pull, man. Oh, yeah. He went for minute bull and mugsy bugs. <laughs> I know. Uh, all right well we appreciate you guys listening thank you so much willie billy uh as always man this is this was a great idea to do this podcast i i'm honored to do it with you thank you and man. uh it and it was it, it really was an honor willie to sit the i i as transparency it was the first time i'd ever seen you on stage before that time it won't be my last because I, I laugh my ass off. And I dare might even get a front row seat just so you can roast me. So oh, yeah. well, wait, next time well, wait, the crowd's going to be interested in 60 minutes of just religion. It'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the funny bone, I'll sell a shit ton of alcohol that night. There, there all right. All right, guys, everybody. Thank you for listening. Uh, check out all the rest of the podcasts on Three Beards Media. Willie, Billy, thank you so much. You guys have a great night. Yeah, buddy. Bye.